In this example, we're going to draw the body plot of function g of s. You'll notice that a function g of s has a damping ratio of less than 1, which means that this is an underdamped system, and because the damping ratio is less than 1, we have complex conjugate poles. Now that we have complex conjugate poles, we need to use the tools we learned in lecture 17. First, let's identify the damping ratio and natural frequency in this function by writing it in the standard form we need for body plot. Now the standard form becomes 1 over s over omega n all squared plus 2 zeta times s divided by omega n plus 1. Basically what we did here was to take the original second order standard form and divide everything by omega n squared. But is the, stand, is the same equation again. So first we can look at the, this equation. Divide If we divide everything by 4, the top and the bottom of the equation, you get this 1 here and 1 on top. So g of s now becomes 4 divided by 4, 1. And everything in the denominator divided by 4, we have s squared over 4 plus 0.1 s plus 1. Now we need s divided by omega n, all is squared. So clearly this is g of s equals to 1 over s over 2 squared. So here is our omega n. And now we need plus 2 zeta s divided by omega n. So s here needs to be divided by omega n, which is 2. So you can write s over 2. What it did here was simply multiplying the bottom and the top of the equation by 2. So this becomes 0.2s over 2. If you divide this, we go back here. Now we have omega n under this s squared, and you also have omega n under this other s. So now this is the standard form. So we have our omega n equals to 2 radians per second, and 2 zeta is what multiplies s in the numerator here. So 2 zeta equals to 0 0.2. gives zeta equals to 0 0.1. This is now important because you're dealing with complex poles. Now let's look at the transfer function and let's see where we start the body plot. If you go to very low frequencies, we don't have any zeros or pole at the origin. The only thing acting at low frequencies is the gain. The gain in this particular function is simply 1. 20 log of 1 is 0. So the body plot at low frequencies will start at 0 and will remain zero up to the first cutoff frequency. In this case, you only have one cutoff frequency, that is two radians per second, which should be around here. So from zero up to two, sorry, from 0 0.1 up to two, we should be at a zero decibels. Now we reached our first cutoff frequency. In fact, the only cutoff frequency for this system, two radians per second. Because this is a complex conjugate pole, now, the Bode plot may go up or down depending on the damping ratio. We know that at this cutoff frequency for complex poles, which in case is 2, the magnitude of the transfer function becomes negative 20 log of 2 zeta. Zeta is 0 0.1, negative 20 log of 0 0.2 is negative 13.9 decibels, positive 13.9 decibels. This indicates that the transfer function at this specific point will go up by 13.9 decibels. It doesn't become 13.9 decibels, it goes up by 13.9 decibels. But because here we have 0, then it will end up at 13.9. But if we were at negative 20, it would be negative 20 plus that, of course. So now the magnitude goes up and back down, and it will reach the value of 13.9 dB at the cutoff frequency, and then comes down to the same value right before that bump. What happens now? Well, now we crossed a cutoff frequency of complex poles. The effect of crossing complex poles is equivalent to crossing two real poles at the same location. If you look at the S-plane, complex poles will be always in pairs. We have two of them, so we can now treat this system as having two real poles placed at the same cutoff frequency. So each of them adds negative 20 decibels per decade, which means that the slope becomes negative 40 decibels per decade. For the phase, each adds negative 90 degrees. Now the slope becomes, the phase becomes negative 180 degrees. 
it is very similar to having two poles at the same cutoff frequency with the exception of what happens exactly at the cutoff frequency. This always applies. So this we are here we are going up because you notice that zeta is less than 0 0.5. So then here we are getting something that is smaller than 1. So the result becomes positive. If now zeta is greater than 0 0.5, this is greater than 1, the result is negative, so the body plot would go actually down at the cutoff frequency. So we end up to 13.9, back to zero. Now what happens? Now the slope becomes negative 40 dB per decade. Two poles placed at the same cutoff frequency. So if here we are at zero, when you go to 20 dB, 20 radians per second, we should go down by 40. We should be around negative 40 decibels because the slope is negative 40 decibels per decade. And here we moved by 10, by a factor of 10 in the frequency. Now notice that we go down based on the, vari the value of the body plot immediately before the bump. We're now going down by 40 decibels based on the value of the peak. We are going down based on the value immediately before the peak. So this is 40 dB. Now, if you go to another decade in frequency, which would be 200 radians per second, we should go down by another 40 decibels, so we end up at negative 80 dB. The slope doesn't change. This is it for the magnitude. Now, let's look at the phase. Following the same analysis, going to low frequencies, we only have a gain. A gain has a phase of zero. The phase will be zero up to the first cutoff frequency, two radians per second. When you reach two radians per second, this cutoff frequency comes from a complex pole. So each complex pole adds negative 180. Same as the effect of two real poles at the same location. The phase jumps to negative 180 and simply stays at a negative 180 because this is the only pole and the only cutoff frequency in the system. Now we can interpolate this function to get a better idea of how the phase behaves. And you should see something like that passing by negative 90 degrees at the cutoff frequency. And this is now the phase. This is magnitude for this complex function.